Hi, I'm Nick Bloom. I'm an economics professor at Stanford University in California. So the benefits from working at home, there are three of them. And interestingly, one of them is very obvious and the other two are less obvious. So the obvious one is you save space for the company. So we were working with actually a very large company in China, in Shanghai, and office space is really expensive. So they allow people to work from home and they save an office space. The other two benefits were something we didn't expect in advance, but turned out to be just as large in terms of dollar figures. So one was uh, employees are extremely happy with working from home. In some ways this is very obvious, but the outcome was they didn't quit the firm. So this firm had 40% attrition every year. It's very expensive hiring and you know, training these people. That fell to 20%. People were just very happy working at home. The other benefit that I think was even more surprising is they were much more productive. So the people at home were working about 15% harder based on output than the people in the office. And the reason seemed to be they were just less distracted, they're more able On working from home, interestingly, the, there's some recent research that's looked at the US census data, so at 150 million employees across the US. And you see a couple of main results. One is, not surprisingly, working from home works very well in uh, jobs you don't have to have so much face-to-face -face interaction. So, you know, what would a job like that be? It would be, for example, someone doing software programming, maybe someone doing telesales, maybe someone doing some back office administration. So one is, you know, how much face-to-face -face interaction do you need? The other thing that's intriguing is you see the changes over time of the growth of working from home has been particularly in jobs that use a lot of IT. So IT has just made it so much easier to work from home. So if I'm an academic in California, uh, I do, you know, everything on a computer, uh, I use broadband, I can work from home two or three days a week. That probably wouldn't have been possible 20 years ago. So it, it, it's an important question, what are the benefits of working from home for employees? So we found three benefits. In some ways, the most obvious is no commute. So it depends, it depends on the employer, but our employer we looked at in China, these guys are commuting about 40 minutes a day each way. Uh, you can hear from my accent, I mean, I'm English. I uh, worked for many years in London. London is a horrible city to commute. We're sitting in Chicago. Chicago also, you know, commuting is a big deal. So any big city commuting costs, both in time and money, that's a big saving. Um, the second benefit was that people get to be at home around others they want to spend time with. And when we saw in China, the people that chose to work from home are typically married. They're a bit older. They're with, with kids. And as a result, I presume uh, they want to spend time with their kids. I presume they want to spend time with their husband and wives. I don't know. That's not, <laughs> that's not good for everyone. Um, but, you know, they, it's typically people that want to be at home. Maybe they want to look after a young child. And then the third reason turned out to be around flexibility. So you can imagine if you're sick, but you're not really sick, you may be happy to work at home, but you don't feel up to going to work. Or the classic case of, uh, you know, there's a leak in, in your basement, you need to get the plumber in, you don't know when he's going to turn up. If you can work from home, you don't really waste much time waiting around for him. So, so we, look, we looked at China. Are the results going to be different for the US? A bit, but I don't think massively, actually. So I visited China. I've been going out there pretty recently. And, in fact, I went there first about 20 years ago in the early 90s and China back then was, you know, I remember being amazed that, you know, the airport was all wood and things looked really developing. And I went out to Shanghai again after 20 year break in summer 2010. It was incredible. Shanghai was, uh, you know, embarrassing. It looked better than most European and US cities. And the employees in these firms, they're paid about half as much as an American firm. The office is brand new, uh, they're American management. They look very much like an American firm. I think the stylized facts about why this works, that people want to save on commuting, that uh, they want to spend time around their wife and, or their you know, husbands and kids, um, that they like the flexibility, are going to be as true in Shanghai as they are going to be in New York or Chicago or London or anywhere else. So I think there's, a, there's an old question about uh, does mo is mo do employees like monitoring or not? And you'd think initially that employees wouldn't like monitoring. You know, my prior is I don't like being evaluated. You know, who, who, who's my boss to tell me whether I'm good or not? But it turns out much of the research, and even my own anecdotal experience that I mentioned in the moment, much of the research suggests that actually good employees like monitoring. Why is that? Well, they're good. They want to be seen as good, and they want their bosses to know they're good, and they want to get paid well and promoted fast. Bad employees tend not to like monitoring. And there's a, actually a classic... Um, natural experiments, a guy called Eddie Lazier, who's a uh, famous economist in Stanford that used to be uh, head of the Council of Economic Advisors. And they looked at a firm called Safe Light Glass that replaces smashed windscreens in cars. And they went from flat pay 
to piece rate pay and monitoring. And what you discover is productivity goes up a lot. And it goes up by about 8%, which is a big deal for the firm. Half of the improvement is because uh, workers work more, but half of it's because the good employees stick around and the bad employees leave. I should say the one caveat is it's done fairly. So you want to monitor outputs, you want to do it in a reasonable way, you want to do it in a way that employees agree with. So clearly kind of random or arbitrary monitoring whereby I listen to one minute of your phone call per month and that's it, it's not a good idea, but anything that's deemed reasonable by employees, particularly good employees, will be a, is a good idea.